Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Thou who hast suffered wounds for us. O Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many miracles. If we let him go on thus, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is expedient for you that man, one man should die for the people, then that the whole nation should not perish. So from that day on, they took counsel how to put him to death. For as they said, the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. Let us pray. O God, who disordain that the multitude of Israel's believing people should honor with the tumultuous joy of the Savior before his sacred passion, and didst inspire the crowd to spread branches of olive trees and palms in the way, and to sing Hosanna in his praise. Grant that we, bearing these palms, the symbol of victory over evil, and these all the branches, the symbol of goodness, meekness, and justice, the gifts of the Holy Spirit within our hearts, may go forth to wage incessant war against the forces of evil, depravity, and falsehood. And so guided through life, in the way of light, truth, and justice, we may enter into everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Increase, O God, the faith of those who put their trust in you, and grant that strengthened in their love of you, they will never suffer disappointments. May these branches of palm, which we, your servants, are about to receive and carry in commemoration of a solemn and sacred day in the life of Jesus Christ, inspire us to turn our eyes heavenward to your holy Jerusalem. Bless, O Lord, these branches of palm, as you did choose Noah 
to be the new father of the human race, Moses to be the leader of Israel's people, and Jesus Christ to be the savior of us all. Grant, we beseech you, that contemplating the wonderful ways of your providence, we may fervently unite our wills with your holy will in the work of your own, our own sanctification and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. sent two disciples saying to them go into the village opposite you where you will find an ass tied and a colt with her untie them and bring them to me if anyone says to you you shall say the Lord has need of them the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them they brought the ass and the colt, and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds who went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O our King and our God, Hosanna in the highest. In 
the singer. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Blessed is he who trusts in God Almighty. To thee we come, O Lord, our God.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God, I will offer the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Open wide the doors and gates. Lift high the ancient portals. The King of glory enters. Who is the King of glory? He is God, the mighty Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, you who have come to, to us so rich in love and mercy. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, for us your wounds were suffered. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have given your Son as the Savior of the human race and a model of humility. We fulfill your will by becoming man and giving his life on the cross Guide our minds by his truth and strengthen our lives by the example of his death that we may live in union with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this Palm Sunday, we take the first reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. This is the word of the Lord. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered with the council and said, What are we to do for this man performs many signs? If we let him go on us, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place 
and our nation. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The track. Go through. Go through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up. Build up the highway. Clear it of stones. Lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, saying to daughter Zion, see your salvation comes. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The reading of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany reclining at table, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costing genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you. Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, 
Where is my guest room where I might eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me in the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again, the fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed, but after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. And then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took him, Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with him, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him 
and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made by hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The chief and high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his, tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy! And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor, know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court, then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priest with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound him, Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to them in reply, You say so. 
The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to him, to them, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloth, cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a bystander, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, My God. Why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave up a loud cry and breathed his last.
The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Jose, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewed out of the rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jose watched where he was laid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. These words are taken from the Old Testament book of Isaiah the prophet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Of the many titles that have been given to our Lord, Jesus Christ, I feel that his title, title of Prince of Peace is so appropriate for today. Our country, as well as our entire world, has seen in 2020, and still in 2021, a virus that has claimed so many lives, has touched so many families, along with unemployment, homelessness, and food insecurities. As people are being vac vaccinated, there seems to be a little more stability in our country and in the world, but there is still so much more to overcome. Even in our world amid the pandemic of the coronavirus, there is so much anger and hatred 
that is on display. Just recently, the unnecessary violence and death of innocent people that took place in Atlanta, Georgia and Boulder, Colorado, cries for peace. The Prince of Peace, our blessed Lord on that first Palm Sunday entered Jerusalem and was greeted with words of Hosanna by a large multitude of people. So many showed him their love and devotion that day by laying palm branches in front of him. According to Holy Scripture, he entered the holy city in humility, seated on a donkey, a simple beast of burden. Now the very word Hosanna is found in the Judeo-Christian tradition and is expressed and defined as one of adoration, praise, and joy. They sang out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Originally, the word Hosanna was an appeal for deliverance taken from the Hebrew word Hosanna, which is translated to, please save us, or please deliver us. In Psalm 118, verse 25, we read of the use of the word Hosanna. Save us now, Hosanna, we beseech you. O Lord, O Lord, we beseech you, send us now prosperity. My brothers and sisters, palms and palm branches have deep symbolical meaning to the Jews of ancient and modern times. Palms, along with other tree branches, were in our part of the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles and were also used by the Maccabeans when they celebrated defeating the Greeks over 2100 years ago. For Christians, the palm branch represents the peace of the Lord. Today, we welcome the Lord into our hearts and into our lives as we receive the symbolic palm. Today, the Lord, in return, greets, greets each of us with the words, Peace be with you. When we talk of the peace of the Lord, what kind of peace does he bring to us this day. I believe that our blessed Lord brings us a peace of tranquility, quietness, and safety. We read Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall need nothing else. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me by the still waters. He restores my soul. I believe that Jesus brings to us a peace of assurance from all disturbances in our world. Did he not say unto his disciples following his resurrection when he came through the locked doors and windows and appeared to them and said, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world give, but as I give you. He also said, let not your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Jesus brings to us a peace of comfort. In John 16, verse 33, Jesus says, I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Finally, I believe that Jesus brings to each of us respite from our own personal trials. Did he not say, come to me, all of you who labor and are heavenly laden, and I will give you rest? I think all of us could use a moment of peace and tranquility, calm and silence 
from what is taking place in our world, from all that takes place within our communities, from all that is taking place among our families, of all that is taking place even within ourselves. My brothers and sisters, the blessed palms which you will be receiving today and will take home and share with others is more than just a simple decoration. It is a reminder of the peace that the Lord offers to each of us. It is a symbol that represents also our love and acceptance of him as the Prince of Peace. Just as those who gathered in Jerusalem that day welcomed him and laid palms in his path, we also welcome him today as our Prince of Peace, who gives us, even if it's just but for a moment, tranquility, deliverance, comfort, and respite. May we all find within ourselves this Palm Sunday the peace of God which passes all understanding. May you and your dear ones celebrate in the Prince of Peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for compassion, but there was none. For comforters, but found none. Instead, they put gall in my food. For my thirst, they gave me vinegar.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus, make us pleasing to you. Alone we can do nothing, but may this perfect sacrifice win us mercy and love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, O powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The suffering and death of your Son brought life to the whole world, moving our hearts to praise your glory. The power of the cross reveals your judgment on this world and the kingship of Christ crucified. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and I in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son and I in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. Let us on this Palm Sunday remember in our prayers the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus and pray for them and their families as well. Let us give God our thanks for all the doctors and nurses, first responders, and healthcare workers who strive every day to save others. In our deepest prayers, let us remember and pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, all abused and neglected animals, all victims of violence both here and abroad. Let us offer God our prayer for the protection of all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. And for all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women, men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered to a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar and to the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship, with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, 
and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity according to your holy will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, may it not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray, most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
Father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. All loving Father, you have satisfied our hunger with this sacred banquet. The death of your Son gives us hope and strengthens our faith. May his resurrection give us perseverance and lead us to salvation. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let, let us bless the Lord. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which we have offered unto yourself may be pleasing to you, and may it be offered for all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of an only son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Sisters, again, I welcome you to our service this Palm Sunday. It is my peace and blessing and prayer that God would bless all of you with your families, that you might truly understand and truly perceive within yourselves the peace that our blessed Lord offers to us. This week, Holy Week, will be a special time in which we will follow the footsteps of our blessed Lord as he walks to Jerusalem where he will offer his life for all our sins. May God bless us this day and let us conclude by offering a prayer for not only the living, those who are sick and suffering and dying, but also for all the repose of the souls of our beloved departed. May God bless you this Palm Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Thou who hast suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. 
and for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.